On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, I'm sharing with you my experience flying the Beta FPV Pavo 20. This drone's already popped up on the channel a couple of times at least. I also did a comparison video between this drone, the Beta FPV Pavo 20, and the Gep RC Cinelog 20 on an episode of FP Vlogs for the droning company with the one, the only Sam Carr. But let's get into the nitty gritty of the Pavo 20 and my experience flying this particular Cinewhoop drone. Let's talk drones. <laughs> What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots worldwide. Make sure you check them out on their YouTube channel. Also, make sure you check them out online at thedroningcompany.com. It's only $10 a month to get signed up with The Droning Company. You'll have access to the job board as well as a variety of other resources with The Droning Company. Also, check them out across all major social media platforms. The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots worldwide. So the saga continues between the Drone Geek and Beta FPV. And before we get into the meat of the review on the Pavo 20, I do want to give a special shout out to Ellie from Beta FPV. Ellie's the person that I've been dealing with in terms of just coordinating product reviews. She's the one that's making sure all the tech gets sent to me and gets sent to me in one piece. So I want to thank Ellie for all of her hard work and continuing to trust me with Beta FPV's equipment. It's really hard to find negative of things to say about beta FPV's drones, but like anything, companies, products, services, whatever, there are pros and there are cons. But before we get into the pros and the cons I experienced with the Pavo 20, let's take a look at this drone on paper. The beta FPV Pavo 20 is a two inch Cinewhoop drone that weighs just 138 grams with the battery installed. That's for the DJI 03 air unit configuration. It takes three S 550 milliamp hour LiPo batteries. It's recommended you stick around 550 milliamp hours and that's really what I found to be the sweet spot. I do have some 450 milliamp hour batteries and a few 650 milliamp hour batteries and I found that the flight time was optimized at 550 milliamp hours. And speaking of flight time, flight times range on average between four and five minutes. This particular configuration includes the DJI 03 air unit which allows me to shoot 4K 120. It also has four 1103 8500 KV motors and the price all in for the airframe and the BTX is around $330. Now that we've got the on paper stuff out of the way for the Pavo 20, let's talk about my personal experience and particularly the pros and the cons that I've derived from my time flying this little drone. We'll start with the pros because there's a lot of good stuff to talk about when it comes to the Pavo 20 and I just wanna get right to it and share it with you. Now the first pro is more of a nod to DJI but I do want to give credit to Beta FPV as well for really thinking outside the box as they designed their drone lineup. Creating a drone this size that's capable of shooting 4K at 120 frames per second, that is fantastic, especially when you're talking about more cinematic shots, especially inside larger facilities or even smaller facilities. I mean, this thing is very, very tiny and at 138 grams in total takeoff weight, that is fantastic when it comes to not having to follow the same regulations, standards, and guidelines for drones that are 250 grams or more. So great video quality out of this very, very compact, tiny, and easy to fly drone. And speaking of the Pavo 20 being a fun drone to fly, this thing has an incredible amount of giddy up behind it. The power behind the Pavo 20 blew me away initially, but I didn't really come to appreciate it fully until I actually got to see it flying against a drone in its category. I'm talking, of course, about the comparison video that I mentioned earlier for the droning company that I did with Sam Carp, where I flew this next to the Gep RC Cinelog 20. This thing smoked the Cinelog 20 in a side-by-side -side race. Now, we didn't do a formal race, but Sam was flying his drone as quickly as he possibly could, and I was just sort of breezing past him with minimal effort. I was blown away at how much power this drone has. And it's not just about the power either, because a drone that is just power is really just good for drag racing. I'm talking about straight lines. If it can't handle well, then it's really not that fun to fly. But 
That's not the case with the Pavo 20. This drone also handles incredibly well for a drone this size and with as much speed as it's capable of. I had no problem passing through really complex airspace. I'm talking like down low through playground equipment. Heck, I was out in San Diego, California at Pacific Beach and I flew underneath a pier really close to the water and this thing handled it like a champ. I'm talking about the breeze coming in off of the ocean, the water underneath of it, and of course, maybe the complex airflow underneath the pier. It was absolutely incredible how capable this little drone was in terms of its handling. And that handling that I achieved is right out of the box. I did no configuration with this drone, its PID, its tuning, nothing was done to the Beta FPV Pavo 20 right out of the box as I was starting my review process for the drone. All of the handling I'm talking about is yours immediately when you put this thing in the air. Again, no tuning necessary to get a great experience flying the Beta FPV Pavo 20. And speaking of pulling it out of the box, this drone's really easy to assemble. It really comes with the airframe complete. All you have to do is connect the VTX of your choosing to the top, and it's as simple as just tucking the VTX into this bracket on the top and then mounting the bracket to the airframe using four screws. It is not hard at all. Of course, you also have to connect a cable from the VTX to the drone, but that sort of goes without saying. And really, for what you get from this drone, I'm talking about the level of the video resolution and the quality of the video, plus the handling and the power and the overall flight time, the price point on this all in really is pretty reasonable. As I said in the on paper section, it's around $330 when you consider the airframe and your VTX being the DJI 03 air unit. Pretty fantastic price point for a drone that's going to provide you some really high quality experiences, both in the video that it produces and in its overall flight experience. Plus, one of my favorite things about this drone has to do with the aesthetic. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, all of the pros have been discussed. Let's get into the cons. Now, as easy as it is to mount the VTX of your choice onto the drone, the actual camera mounting system kind of sucks. What I'm talking about here is if you look on the bracket that you use to mount your VTX, in this case, the O3 Air unit, there are two little crossbars that just jut out on the front. And what these do is they absorb the initial impact if you were to crash this drone before the actual camera itself. It's supposed to protect the camera. The problem with this is on wide mode for the DJI 03 air unit, you can plainly see these brackets. In fact, I think you can see it in that normal field of view as well. It just sticks out too far and it interferes with the shot. And when you can't mount an action camera to a drone and you're depending upon the feed that comes through that O3 air unit for your actual usable video, that is totally unacceptable. What's really annoying about it is you can't actually shoot in wide mode without seeing the crossbars. If you plan on shooting video and then doing retroactive stabilization with a program like Gyroflow, you're gonna run into some issues because if you shoot in wide, you can see the crossbars that are meant to protect the camera itself. But if you shoot in that normal field of view and you manage to not see those crossbars, I don't really shoot in normal, so I don't know how it works and I didn't think to test that, sorry about that you can't stabilize the footage if it's in the normal field of view. You need it to be in wide field of view to be able to stabilize DJI footage after the fact. So the only solution to not seeing the crossbars is to pitch the camera way up high. I'm talking an extreme pitch for a drone in this class. I would purchase a drone like this to shoot cinematic stable footage in an FPV format, something that's a little bit more glidey, moves a little bit smoother than like your traditional DJI Mavic 3 or Mini 4 Pro, whatever the case may be. But because you have to pitch the camera up so aggressively in order to get the crossbars out of the actual field of view, you're not really afforded a lot of opportunity to slow down your shots and be more precise with your flying through different objects and different areas. The next con that I experienced has to do with the RX protocol, your receiver protocol. So there are a few different configurations I think that you can get from Beta FPV. Their preferred configuration and the one they sent me is Express LRS or ELRS. And the difference between the receiver on this drone and the receivers that you might see on larger drones is that this is an SPI based receiver protocol. So 
When you have a traditional or a regular receiver, it's typically a little chip about this big and it wires into your drone's flight controller. So it's a separate entity, it's its own thing, and you're able to configure it a little bit more easily. With these SPI-based RXs, You've got this real issue when it comes to downloading the correct firmware version, making sure that everything's up to date and matching. When I tried to convert this from the DJI FPV controller 2 and fly it with my Radio Master TX16S, I had a lot of issues getting the ELRS on board this drone to communicate with the ELRS module that I had for my Radio Master. In fact, I wasn't able to successfully get them to bind and be able to fly the drone with the Radio Master. So I really had a bad taste in my mouth for that particular reason. I would have loved to have flown this with the Radio Master, but I never got the opportunity to. Not yet anyway. As great as the handling on this drone is, it's not acro friendly. And we experienced that with its little sister, the Pavo Pico. The fact is, whoops in general are not great for acro style flight. And the reason for that has to do with the duck guards. They catch a lot of air. There's a lot of turbulence when you're trying to maneuver the airspace at a more aggressive angle. It's just not ideal for that. Could you pop the prop guards off and have a better acro experience? Sure, maybe, but stock as you see it right now right here it is not a great drone for acro so unless you plan on taking the prop guards off you should really just plan on flying this drone uh, in cinematic styles and maybe for racing without having to do all of the flips tricks and things to hit gates and and checkpoints whatever the case may be the flight time on this is not ideal either now it's better than the pavo pico and i would expect that for a larger drone with a larger battery but you get about four to five minutes on average. This is after I've broken in my 3S batteries that I purchased for this drone. And I gotta tell you, I was hoping for at least two minutes more. I know that you have to be realistic when it comes to flight time on FPV drones, especially drones that are using smaller batteries, but I was really disappointed uh, with the flight time. It's not the worst thing about this drone by a long shot, but I really would have liked to have seen like a six or seven minute flight time if I'm being honest. It seems petty, but when you think about six or seven minutes versus four or five minutes, you're increasing by an exponential percentage of flight time when you're talking about those short of windows. So I just would have liked to have seen a little bit more out of this drone. And to wrap the cons list up and kind of piggyback on an earlier bullet in this particular list, you can't mount an action camera to the Pavo 20. And that's where the Synalog 20 from Gep RC actually trumped this drone. The Synalog 20 from Gep RC has the ability to mount a naked GoPro or a naked action camera on board the drone, despite the fact it's the same exact size as this drone. The Pavo 20, however, doesn't have any feasible way to mount an action camera. In fact, mounting a naked action camera on this would likely not work because there's no port to actually plug the action camera into. You could probably solder the wires onto the all-in-one chip for the flight controller and ESC, but I don't know how feasible that is, how practical it is. Is this a huge problem? No, because you have the O3 air unit on board, but if you wanted a little bit more variety in your shot, or if you just wanted to decrease the camera angle and use the VTX on board purely for visualization during your flight and collect footage with another camera, it's just not an option with this particular drone. All in all, I love the Pavo 20. It is a great little whoop drone, and I have a lot of fun flying it too. And quite frankly, even though this is difficult when it comes to getting a little bit more of a precise flight or a slower paced flight for cinematic purposes, once you sort of get used to the handling and the power behind this drone, you can mitigate that problem and get pretty smooth with it. I've found that over the course of about a month of flying this particular drone, I've gotten really good at handling it versus other whoop style drones that I have and that I fly regularly. So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite flyers in my fleet. And I got to tell you, I think I'll be sticking with the Pavo 20 for the foreseeable future. If you're looking for a manual style FPV drone that's a lot of fun to fly, look no further than the Pavo 20 from Beta FPV. This thing gets your heart racing. I mean, the adrenaline that pumps through me when I'm flying the Pavo 20 isn't dissimilar to when I'm flying my five inch freestyle drones. It is a lot of fun to fly the Pavo 20 and it's a really 
low barrier of entry in terms of cost. It's great for people that don't want to break the bank on a larger drone platform and still want a similar experience to flying like a five inch drone in freestyle. It's not great for acro flight, but I will say if you just like flying fast and flying through things really, really fast and hitting gaps, perfect drone for that. However, if you're looking for something that is a little bit more slower paced, a little bit more controlled and deliberate in its movements, this might not be the drone for you. It's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. And like I said, if you spend some time behind the sticks on this drone, you sort of learn to rein it in a little bit and get those more precise controls and those slower cinematic shots. But if you don't have a lot of time on the sticks behind this drone, initially, you're gonna have a hard time controlling it to get that cinematic flow that you might be looking for from another Whoop drone. What did you think of the Beta FPV Pavo 20? Whether you have the drone Drone or your only experience with the drone is this review video and other review videos, let me know down in the comments below. I want to hear your opinions. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. It helps me out a lot, helps get this video out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. If you really, really like this video and you love drone content shot by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, well, my friend, this is the channel for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and while you're at it, hit the bell icon too. It'll give you a notification every time I post a new video. Now, now, before I wrap this video up officially, I do just want to jump in here and let you know that there is an affiliate link down in the description of this video. If you're planning on buying the Pavo 20 or any other drone or product from Beta FPV, it would mean a lot to me if you use that affiliate link because I get a nice little kickback from Beta FPV. Now, I say that and I just want to make it very, very clear. I know that there's been a lot of controversy in recent history when it comes to affiliate links, especially in the world of FPV drone influencers. I'll use that lack of a better term. I would never recommend a product to you that I didn't believe in or use myself. If I tell you that a product is worth buying, that's because I mean it. I wouldn't say it if it's a product that I wouldn't use. So for that reason, I am going to include affiliate links for products that I believe in and that I would use or actually use myself. If I don't believe in a product, its capabilities, or I just wouldn't use it myself, I'm not going to recommend it to you. I think that's immoral, I think it's unethical, and quite frankly, I think it's slimy. I can't blame anybody, especially since I'm guilty of it too, for trying to make a buck. That's what this is all about. I mean, really, I love drones at the end of the day, but I wouldn't be putting as many hours as I do into YouTube content if I didn't want to get a little bit of benefit back from on it. So just so we're clear, I have affiliate links down below in the description of this video on my website, thedronegeek.com. You can find affiliate links everywhere that I post content. Just know that when you click on an affiliate link from me, it's because I believe in the product and I would use it or I do use it myself. That's all I have to say about that. Until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek. This is the Beta FPV Pavo 20. We are out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, y'all are rocking, bro.